going on YouTube? Burlington Northern HO fan here and today we are at the Illinois Railway Museum for day two of Diesel Days 2023. I had to work the first day so I couldn't come but I am planning on doing Saturday and Sunday. Today is Saturday, we're doing day two. Let's see what we can get into. We got 9911A here pulling out the Nebraska Zephyr Consist. Looking beautiful as ever. And over here, you have a Fairbanks Morse Milwaukee Road switcher, which is pretty freaking neat. So hopefully we'll get to see that one roll around a little bit today. That'll be pretty awesome. Back behind there, there's some more diesels lined up that I'll have to come check it out. But let's take a walk around and see what we, we can find. Over here, we've got one of my favorite locomotives. SD50 Chicago Northwestern 7009. Recently got repainted. It has our CNW logo on her now. Looks like they might be moving her here. There we go. Awesome locomotive. God, that logo looks so good. <laughs> I love this thing. When they first got this thing, I fell in love with it immediately. Let's see what else we can get into. We're here. We have that interesting looking switcher from the last video. Be pulling the caboose train today. First revenue run. Definitely going to have to ride that. SD24, Burlington Northern 504, originally uh, Burlington Northern, or Burlington Route, my bad, originally Burlington Northern, and uh, this locomotive was actually in the movie Groundhog Day when it was in its Burlington Northern paint scheme, but they ended up repainting it to look more like when it was originally bought, so another very cool locomotive. Here's BN3. Let's closer look at 308 Milwaukee Road 118 a personal favorite 4506 Little Rock Rock Island and the Illinois Terminal locomotive we saw in the last video and of course the best one the U30C down there Isn't she a beauty? Definitely have to ride her today. She's supposed to be pulling the Nebraska Zephyr Consist today. Very rusty, patina-like Southern Pacific locomotive. Got a couple of locomotives sitting in front of the engine shop. Here's a closer look at the Illinois Terminal locomotive and the Rock Island locomotive. We're gonna have a fun day today. So 
in this part of the video they had this locomotive at the subway station where you could go in it and look at the engine and you can go into the cab it's very cool a better view of 7009 here Beautiful locomotive. So in this part of the video, I walked down the line past bar nine of all the locomotives they had lined up. So we have a an older locomotive here, and then we have a a GE Slug, which is pretty neat. Be cool to see if they ever get that put together with something. That'd be nice. But this just continues of me going down the line of all the locomotives they have lined up. Pretty cool. Uh, most of the... I see people walking down there. So in this part of the video, I was able to go into the back areas of the museum and snoop around a little bit and look at everything they have back there. Nobody told us that we couldn't be back there, so we ended up walking back there and snooping around. In this part, we have a Milwaukee road switcher that was doing the take the throttle and it was going through the yard. It was pretty neat. I really like this. It's a Fairbanks Morris locomotive. So in this part, I went back to that locomotive at the station and got into the cab of the switcher. Minnesota transfer over there, I believe. Yep, pretty neat Alco. Here they've got a couple more locomotives. There's a GT locomotive down there. Might be able to get a better shot of it if I walk, take a walk down there. Just a good close-up shot of 7009. Pretty neat. Better look at the GT locomotive down there. Pretty neat. Better look at our Minnesota Transfer Railway switch switcher. I believe it's an RS3. Pretty neat. And here we have one of my favorite locomotives. C&W 6847, the SD40-2. One of my favorite diesel locomotives. She's a beauty.
awesome locomotive. Track two, this will be departing in about 10 minutes. After that, it will be the 1240 departure of the caboose train. That train will be on the east Y, which is behind the main depot by the Depot Street Shelter. The Zephyr will leave again at 1 o'clock. But the next mainline train will be the 1220 departure of the coach train on station track 2. Here's a close up shot of that Elko. the SD40-2. God, I love that thing. So in this part of the video, we got on the coach train. The SD24 Burlington locomotive was pulling this coach train and we got on to the Rock Island coach. Here's the best one. <laughs> okay, let me just... So, right now we're sitting in the siding waiting for the CNW Elko to come past us with the caboose train. It's a pretty cool shot right here. Here comes the CNW Elko. Oh, the Elko? Yep. So after we got off the coach train, we came over to the, the Zephyr, which was lined up with the U30C Burlington Northern Locomotive, and I got a couple shots of it as it took off. Here we have 5383, about ready to pull away from the 
station with the Zephyr consist. In this part of the video, I was able to get some better shots of the GT locomotive. Here we have 6847, getting ready to do take the throttle. So in this part of the video, the CNW Echo was backing up the caboose train to uncouple, and we ended up getting on the caboose train to see a very nice surprise of the locomotive I really wanted to ride on show up. So the locomotive that ended up coupling to the caboose train was the Green Bay Western locomotive and uh, it was one of the only locomotives at the museum that I never had to get a chance to get a ride on and I was very happy to get a chance to ride on it and it was very smoky with it being an Alco and here's another good shot of 5383 as we drove past it. Union Pacific 1848 backing up into the caboose train. Just got done riding the Green Bay Western on the caboose train. Most modern diesel locomotive they have in their arsenal. It's a Dash 8. So at this point in the video, the CNW by levels were getting pulled by BN3, and we wanted to get on them, so we got on the top level on one of the cars. Very cool. A lot like Metro's. We some weird ass cars. <laughs> I've been on the Superliner before, but that's not like this at all. <laughs> Good luck.
getting ready to do the final move of the day. They're gonna latch them all up together. That'll be pretty neat. train. Ain't something you'd see every day. They're gonna put all of this together. So at this point in the video, they latched everything up together. I got on the observation car, but I decided to get off. But here's a couple of, here's a video of what it looked like on the car. And at this point, I got onto the coach section and I got myself a seat on the coach section of the Nebraska Zephyr and sat down for a very nice ride.
And at this point, the dispatcher gave us the highball order over the radio, and we were all good to go down the main line. In this next portion of the video, you're going to see pretty much the whole trip down the main line going forward because there was a speaker over the rate intercom talking about the train itself. It's pretty cool. Welcome to the Nebraska Zephyr. Anybody riding for the first time? I am. Yeah. Uh, we have one person here. We have a few other people. Wonderful. We're so glad to have you. Uh, just a reminder, please keep your shoes off the seat. This is an old train, and even though it's dry out, you still have dust and stuff on your shoes when you come in. So please, no shoes on the seats. Uh, we're very happy today to have an expert on the Burlington's with us. Who's, who's that? <laughs> Robert Tabert from Midwest Rail Rangers. And they've done a lot of research on the Zephyr and we have an agreement with them that uh, about three times a year they'll come out and they'll talk to you about the Zephyr. Uh, about the history of the Zephyr, about this particular Zephyr. And so, uh, Bob, share some information about the Zephyr. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming on riding the Nebraska Zephyr. We appreciate Jim, and we appreciate our agreement in place here with the Illinois Railway Museum. It's a real treat to be able to come out here. I uh, rode this train ever since the, um, I'll date myself, the mid-'80s. I was about his age or maybe, maybe that age back there. And uh, so it's a real treat to actually, for the first time, put on our program. As Jim said, we're doing that. And we also are, um, this is our first, actually our first day that we've been had our uh, agreement. And we are working on a, um, just completed a book about the history of this train. Um, we're going to have, we'll be back out here twice in September. September, su the Sunday of Labor Day weekend, and then the Saturday the 16th. And we will have the books for sale. Um, if you're not coming back out, you can also buy them on NebraskaZephyr.com. It's a 106 page book with all the proceeds above the printing costs being donated to the Zephyr Restricted Fund here at IRM. So tell you a little bit of history, show you some unique uh, artifacts here uh, as well that have to do with this train. So uh, we're going to go back in time a little bit, oh, almost 100 years to uh, to uh, 1930, and a lot of people were, uh, airplanes are just about getting pressurized, they're figuring that out, a lot of people who were able to afford the Model T or whatever car they had, so train tra uh, travel, travel was um, really starting to take a dip, of course you had the Great Depression going on in 1929 as well, so a couple of people at the Burlington Railroad and also the um, Bud Company, which built rail cars, kind of got together, both had the last name of Bud. And Ralph Budd, who was the president of the CB&Q, and then he also had another Bud, and he was in charge of the uh, building rail cars. We got together and said, we need something light, fast, speed, get people to death in hours. So they came up with the design of the Zephyr, and they turned it to two of the architects uh, in Pennsylvania. One of them was uh, Albert Dean, 
you probably don't rec you might recognize the bud names, but you probably don't recognize uh, Albert and Walter Dean. They were the two architects. Albert designed the car that you are riding in right now. All the angles, the design, the round, the sleekness. And then his brother Walter designed the um, are what's articulated trucks on the train. If you notice when you get off, there's one set of railroad, the, the trucks and the two cars share them. That's very unique as most uh, cars have their own. But it was to make the uh, Zephyr lightweight, go, uh, go, they set new speed records, uh, first 100 miles an hour, then up to 110 with the Zephyrs uh, out in uh, near McCook, Nebraska. So they did a lot of research and design on the Zephyrs to make them sleek. They built a about five foot long by one foot model of the Zephyrs, and they put it in a huge wind tunnel. What's that? And they blew smoke on the Zephyrs, and this is the actual model. Uh, it's still owned by the daughter of uh, the Deans, one of the Deans and they would blow smoke to see how aerodynamic. And they came up, came up with a whole bunch of different designs. And the front of the engine didn't look too much different than the original engine. Um, the, the original, the engine that we have here is a little, is a more modern. But they came up with uh, various different types of designs uh, for this effort. Now, how many people have been to science and industry uh, at the museum in Chicago? Most people have been at some point on a field trip or later in life. And that was the Pioneer Zephyr. That was the very first Zephyr that ended up being designed. It's, uh, if you haven't been in a couple years ago back, they redesigned and put a new exhibit in at Science and Industry. It's pretty cool. Uh, but that was the original Zephyr. And then after that, it was such a success that they built two other Zephyrs called the Twin Zephyrs. And the Twin Zephyrs would ride up along the uh, shoreline of the of Mississippi River. They would go out through Aurora, Savannah, East Dubuque, and go up along the river. And there were two train sets. That was the second and third Zephyr. Uh, three people in the observation park. Here's a picture of it down at Union Station uh, in Chicago. One would start the day in the Twin Cities and make a round trip to Chicago. The other would start in Chicago and make a round trip to the Twin Cities. The problem with these cars, the trains are only three cars long. And one of them was the engine and baggage and express compartment. So really only two passenger cars on these trains, which became a very popular route for the Burlington. It was so popular that if you were going a short distance and they oversold the train, they would put a folding chair and they would stick you in the baggage compartment for maybe, maybe you were only going 10 or 20 miles. But these trains, I, mean, I didn't believe that and until I found out a friend of mine had one of the folding chairs with the logo on it and was actually has a picture. So you would be in the baggage compartment. And let me tell you folks, the baggage compartment, it had live chickens and sometimes livestock in there. So uh, it wasn't just boxes in there, let me tell you that. So if you're lucky enough, you might ride in the observation car. In fact, here's some pictures of this very time. Oh, right about where you're sitting. These ladies were, were right there in this car. Of course, people would dress up back in the day, where uh, their best ladies would wear a dress and heels, and guys would wear their suit. Wouldn't, wouldn't get by with just wearing shorts or jeans uh, back in the day. Ahead of us is the dining car, and of course, you would definitely a gentleman would wear their suit coats. Uh, ladies wear their picks their hair, and, and definitely white tablecloths. You want to experience a meal? Well, if you come back the weekend of September 16th, I'm told that we are going to be doing some meals in the dining car. Uh, just watch IRM.org. Not sure when the tickets will go on sale, but I'm told that will happen. So for the first 10, 11 years, this would run on a very scenic route. If you ever taken the Great River Road, I think it's Highway 35 in Wisconsin. Not sure what it is in Illinois. I think maybe 664. I don't know. But it goes right along the river. You have bluffs on one side, the Mississippi River on the other. That's the type of scenery you'd have. And then you see where our conductor Jim, you'd look back there and you'd see the cliffs on one side, the palisades of the river along Savannah, and you would um, have the Mississippi River on the other side. So that 11 years it operated on that beautiful route. Uh, and then what happened was in 1947, this train was going through Downers Grove, Illinois. If you're not familiar with Downers Grove, it's a west suburb of Chicago. And there was a train accident. This is April of 1947. We're on the train of the, what was called the trains of the goddesses, and that's what you might notice each of the cars 
have uh, each of the cars are named for a different uh, goddess or god. Well, this train derailed and hit the Downers Grove station, shearing off the front of the station. If you know where Downers Grove is, it's about 22 miles west of Chicago. If you're going out to Aurora, several people were killed, 48 people were injured. Um, it was a pretty tragic wreck. It made headlines in the April edition of the Chicago Tribune. Um, in fact, they they were repairing some of the cars on here, and some of the workers here at IRM mentioned that they could see where some of the cars came apart and were derailed. So they took uh, took about six months to make the repairs, and when the train set came out, they decided we're going to we're going to build an even grander twin zephyrs. So they decided to move this particular train set to Nebraska, to run through Nebraska, and they renamed it the Nebraska Zephyr. And it was ran through from Chicago to Iowa to uh, Omaha and Lincoln. So it would run through that area. And, sp and speaking of the dining car, well, here's what you would eat in the dining car if we went in there. Let's see what's on the menu for dinner, because I'm getting hungry. I've been on here all day doing programs. Uh, we have walleye pike tonight, $2.30 your walleye fish dinner. Chicken with steamed rice, $2.20. Pork chops with country gravy for two fifty, or we had a sandwich, hot prime rib sandwich for a buck seventy. Sounds really yummy right now. So how much did things cost back in the day? Well, a ticket from Chicago to Lincoln in uh, this is nineteen forty nine would be thirteen dollars and eighty four cents. That's hundred eighty dollars in today's money. And somebody on the first excursion, Google and Amtrak ticket. Amtrak still runs every day from Chicago to Lincoln. And it was only $88. So train travel was actually a lot more expensive back in the 1940s. If you wanted to sit in a nice car, a parlor car like this one, you'd pay about an extra $39 over the people who are up in coach. So this would, this would cost you additional money to ride back here. So this ran on that uh, Nebraska route until uh, the early to mid 1960s, and then that's when this was pulled out of service. Uh, there were two. Remember, there were two of these built because of the twins. So there's a train of the gods and train uh, trains of the goddesses. The train of the goddesses was luckily bought by a Illinois Railway Museum volunteer and then donated to the museum. So we we have this preserved, and we're really really happy to, that this was preserved and has been taken care of over the last 60 some years. The Trains of the Goddess Gods, which was the sister train, was bought by a bunch of private individuals and it ended up being um, sold off to the Prince of Saudi Arabia. So the train was brought down to the Gulf of Mexico, put on a barge, shipped over to Saudi Arabia. Problem with that, these were not built for 120 degrees every day, and especially the blowing sands of the desert. So after about six months, it was pulled out of service and has been sitting on a track in Saudi Arabia on the desert for the last 40 years. So we're really lucky to have this preserved. You can actually see it if you know where to look. We'll have in our book. You can look on Google Maps, and you can actually see the Zephyr sitting out in the desert. So pretty cool to pretty cool to. Um, have that and we appreciate you riding with us and uh, thank you for supporting it and riding on the uh, Nebraska Zephyr. So hope you have a good rest of your trip. Thank you. Okay guys, that's going to be the end of day two at Diesel Days 2023 at IRM. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun today. I'll see you guys tomorrow for day three. See you guys in the next video. Peace.